Okay, I think we are in pretty good shape. I think we're live, so if anyone, I should probably ch I'll check the stream. I have the stream open. Why don't I look? Woo. <laughs> there I am. Yeah. Ooh. All right. This is where we found we're, we're being surrounded by zombies and this thing in the center. That's definitely evil. Uh -huh. It is. We know for sure it's evil because there's a spell up that tells you if things are evil or not. The spell told us. So I'm so terrified. I'm so very terrified. For sure, okay. evil. The things surrounding you aren't evil, but the thing controlling them is. Uh -huh. Yay! So uh, <laughs> it looks like we are alive and we're good. Uh, hey, if you if any of you guys haven't tweeted yet, feel free to do that about the game or retweet. Sure, I will retweet it. Uh, but hey, hello, audience. Welcome to. Seekers of the Scorpion Crown on the Greyhawk channel. This is a BX D and D game airing every week, Saturdays from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Other times in other time zones. That's how time zones work. But uh, so, like I said, we're playing BX D and D. That is the D and D uh, basic expert sets released in 1981, I believe. Uh, the only ways in which we are tweaking the rules is we are using ascending instead of descending armor class and we are using base attack bonus instead of Thacko. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I have some homebrew bits that I put in there every once in a while, but mostly I try and stick to monsters from the books. All that good stuff. Uh, sometimes I steal things from the Fiend Folio and then I'm like, wow, you guys can't beat this. It's going to kill you. And, you know, that's what happens. But... <laughs> But anyway, uh, I'm Lex. I've got some wonderful players here. We're one player short today. Michaela is at a fair, uh, having a real fun time without us. And I'm sad about it, but it sounded like it was really cool. So I can't can't be upset. Uh, I'm going to talk right now for you about our sponsors because we got some. Greyhawk Channel has got some dang sponsors. Transition to sponsor window. Hey, so many sponsors help the Greyhawk Channel keep this channel running. We're really happy that they support us. They're great. I'm going to talk about some of them now. The first one is Patreon supporters and Twitch subs. You guys keep this channel going. Because of you, it all happens. So big thank you, first and foremost. Uh, up next... Gotta let you know that the Greyhawk channel is officially supported by Roll20. Roll20 is a virtual tabletop. You can find it by going to roll20.net and you can use it to play all your different RPGs. They have rule set plugins and character sheets and things for all sorts of different systems, uh, all kinds of different dice. You can import your own maps and have tokens and all sorts of fun stuff. And if you'd like, you can pay for a subscription and get access to extra features like dynamic lighting and all that good stuff. Uh, up next, we have Heroic Maps. Heroic Maps sell their maps on Drive-Thru RPG. They have a library of 300 maps on there. So if you want to check them out, please do so. There's some good stuff over there. Next, we have Tabletop Loot. So... Hey, you can go to tabletoploot.com, enter Greyhawk in the coupon code box, and get 15% off your dice order. So take advantage of that, everybody. Why not? Dice are great. And finally, if you are a Patreon supporter or Twitch sub, guess what? You have access to cool special coupons through the Greyhawk channel. So if you go to the Greyhawk channel's private section in their Discord, you can get coupon codes to RueInc.com and Cantrip Candles. Get access to all that good stuff, all those good discounts. Take advantage of it. Why not? You're you're already paying for it. You know, it's worth it. We're back. I've finished talking about all the sponsors. Now we're going to talk about the game. Who? Like I said, I'm Lex. I'm the DM. Uh, I kill lots of people all the time. My kill ratio is low because I didn't kill anyone last session. So everybody better watch out. Uh, and I have these wonderful players that put up with me killing them all the time. Uh, let's hear who they are and what they are playing. 
Uh, let's start with Wild Engineer. Yes, hello, I am Wild Engineer, and I am playing Randall, the magic user, and I really don't want to die. <laughs> okay, uh, Davis, who are you, what are you playing? Hello, I'm Davis. I'm playing, tonight I'm playing Cramble. My other character is Onions. Cramble's an elf. He's doing his best. He just wants to find some towers. This is the opposite of a tower. Uh, I hope we don't die. Oh, it's a vain hope. Okay, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jordan, and normally I play Jarmy the fighter, but he is blinded and lost in the desert. Uh, so we'll find out his fate later. But tonight I am playing Anger the Cleric, um, who, uh, yeah, we stumbled into a, a pit of, of undead, but it looks like maybe friendly undead. We're a little not sure about that yet so I'm excited to yeah shrug dm just shrug your shoulders Are they <laughs> uh okay so what happened last time well the party uh had some fun encounters at an oasis they bought some stuff they haggled over prices they didn't get to roll any kind of persuasion or uh <laughs> any any checks to see if they were being had by the salesman so they might have been we don't know. That doesn't exist in BX. I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't just write a rule to put it in. I mean, I'll write a rule to put in a bunch of other things, but I won't do that. <laughs> that would be too. That'd make things easier. Can't do it. Anyway, after that, and they got some cool magic items. After that, they headed off into the deep desert in search of the Tower of the Sands, which uh, I'm going to show you the map real quick. You know, uh, bad DM me. I forgot to put the little red dotted line uh, this past week. I said I was going to do it, and I didn't do it. Uh, I will remember to do that for next time. But uh, bring up the map right now. Uh, they went from the Var Oasis towards the Tower of the Sands. This is because their archaeologist uh, friend, Larith Kingsmill, uh, thought they had a lead to finding the Lost City of Enmakar, which is what the party is looking for. And in the Tower of the Sands, there might be information on that. Seemed probable. So they decided to go check it out. Uh, on the way, they ugh, got caught in a sandstorm, ran into some goblinoids and a wizard, I guess, uh, and had to find refuge in a cave. The floor of the cave collapsed. I certainly wasn't forcing them anywhere. This wasn't, this wasn't me forcing them into a place. No, this is... I've never railroaded anyone in my life. <laughs> but they uh, fell down into a subterranean complex, a tomb, if you will, that has been constructed for uh, a very particular purpose that the party, maybe they figured it out, I'm not sure. Uh, they ventured through, they fought some beetles that almost killed them, that was fun. And they found a bunch of strange uh, grooved uh, areas in the floor in which it seems oil was meant to be placed in and then burned. Oh, then they ran to some undead. That was creepy. But they found out those undead were not evil because of a detect evil spell that uh, Anger the Cleric has going currently. Finally, they wandered into a large central chamber. A uh, huge chamber, vaulting ceiling, five different doors. One in each corner and one at the north end of the chamber. They came through one of those corner doors from the antechamber they were in. Uh, at the center of this chamber was a large, who, uh, I want to say Persian Sphinx, if you want to Google that. Maybe I'll post a link to a picture at some point. But this is a bull with the head of a man. It is a big statue just in the center of the chamber. Uh, before they had a chance to really look over anything, from another side chamber, a bunch of those goblinoids they had seen in the desert came out, followed by a whole lot of zombos. So many zombos, just a lot of them. Uh, they were engaged in a pitched combat, and as one of the goblinoids fell back, tripping over his dumb gobbo feet, uh, he let a sling fly that hit the face of the statue, cracking it. At which point, 
a black ooze began to seep out of the face of the statue. Spooky. What an image I have created. I'm such a good DM, everyone. So, <laughs> we're here, kind of in the middle of a combat. We got a cat right up in that camera. It's good. Uh, what would you guys like to do? Jeez. Um... What can we do? There's, there's <laughs> chaos all around you. Is the statue moving at all, or is just black ooze coming out of the face? Uh, the statue itself is not moving, but Black Ooze is coming out of the face and pooling on the ground at the foot of the statue. And I definitely feel like a evil. Oh, it's so evil. It's blindingly so evil. evil. <laughs> um, uh, I guess I'll turn to our goblins who are attack being attacked um, and say, Hey, do you know how to get out of here? <laughs> The goblin stirs to you and he's like, Are you crazy? I, I don't know. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to right now. That's what I'm doing. There's zombies everywhere. And then a zombie just grabs him, carries him off screen. <laughs> oh, God. It's like you've got a zombie problem. <laughs> the zombie took the sand child. Oh, no. If the sand kids are being attacked like this, we have no chance. <laughs> They're one weakness. Zombies. Zombies. <laughs> Everyone knows if you want to counter sand children, you get yourself a horde of zombies. Obviously. Any adventure, any first level nub Would... knows that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. Take out sand children with the power of necromancy. Mm -hmm. What's going on with that statue? Is it still oozing stuff? Oh, yeah. I mean, very little time has passed because I'm, you know, giving you guys a chance to respond. We're going round by round right now. Would uh, you say it is gushing or is it oozing? Ugh. Neither word is good. How moist is <laughs> no, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Should we get out of here? I don't know uh, where we're going to go. Are there any ent entrances or exits besides the one we came through? Yeah. Uh, there. So there's the there's uh, a smaller uh, entrance to what would seem to be an antechamber at each corner of the room. And then there is a larger entrance, which is at the north side of the room north wall not the one we came through no the one you came through was an antechamber entrance one okay. of the corners and these goblins also came through an antechamber they did okay um i'm gonna pick up a rock and i'm gonna chuck it at the ooze sure and see if the ooze reacts to the rock oh no <laughs> what no why that would you rock. do that the rock hits the hits the puddle of ooze that's pooling on the ground, uh, and I, it doesn't seem to it doesn't it doesn't seem to have any negative effect from hitting it, uh, but the the goop does start to wriggle and writhe as more of it accumulates. I'm so scared of north? that ooze. <laughs> north is that what we're thinking? Yeah, yeah. We think we need to get out of here as quick as we can. To the north, to the north, and uh, we'll kind of scoot around the ooze and avoid the undead if possible. Sure. And see if we can get towards the north, uh, get to to safety to find strength in numbers with all of our retainers with weapons who want to help us fight. <laughs> yeah, let's find those retainers. <laughs> they're, they're right outside that door, you guys. <laughs> Just get to them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, as you're doing this, several of the zombies are breaking off from their combat with the goblinoids, and oh, the the, uh, the spellcaster as well is among those goblinoids. There seem to be about six uh, gabos and one cloaked figure, uh, and maybe a dozen zombies, something like that. Uh, some of the zombies break off from this this combat with the the goblinoids, and. They don't go after you, but they do go after the goop that is pooling on the floor. Uh, they remember how I told you there was uh, these grooves in the floor all over the other chambers, and oil and fire had been spreading through them. Uh, that is just now starting to spread into this chamber and illuminate it. 
and again you as it becomes illuminated you see all of these like pictograms and wall carvings and all like with all these different images uh some of which portray uh people being entombed uh they're just like marching into a, a tomb and then being entombed in it uh and sort of above all of them is a uh a robed figure wearing a crown who is just pointing down at them as they uh march uh but so the zombies break off they start some of them go right for the for the goop and start uh whacking at it uh their 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 whacks seem to be having no significant effect uh, others run and go into another uh, antechamber. At the same time, those four skeletons that you guys saw in the chamber you just came from uh, come out of that chamber holding torches and head right for the ooze. Holding those torches. Uh, what else happens in that round? Uh, the... The other zombies fighting the goblins fight. Okay, two goblins die. <laughs> um, oh no. So. Ooh, my pen doesn't work. Oh, um, no. I forget. Do I have a torch? I had a torch because of the beetles. You did, yeah. You're yeah, one. so I probably still have a torch. Okay. Mm, I think I have a torch as well, and Elson has a torch. Hmm. I can light a torch. Oh, I don't have a torch. I have a lantern. Um. I'll give you a torch. Cool. Can I use my wand to detect secret doors while we're in here? Uh, yes. Or is, it, is this the next round yet? Uh, not yet, but okay. you. So yeah. on the next round, I will do that. Okay. Uh, the uh, some of the goblinoids and the caster uh, are still just attacking the zombies, but two of the goblins break off and attack. Try to attack you guys as you're running by. They're you know melee and there are four of you but there's sort of just three of you okay tell me randall you have mage armor up don't you or shield rather it's it's the same uh, one of the yeah. uh, goblinoids swings a club at you and it glances off your magical shield. And the goblin's like, oh, magic! <laughs> uh, another one attacks anger and hits. Dealing two points of damage. Okay. I wanted to say bludgeoning, but then I'm like, damage types don't exist in this edition. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, now we're into the next round. Uh, you guys go through that doorway. Or I cast secret. Oh, not just find secret doors before. I mean, you, yes, you can announce that you're going to cast that at the beginning of your round. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, bah, 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 bah. But you are heading towards the doorway, so I will announce what is there okay. at the start of the round to be suitably dramatic. Oh. A wide stone walkway lays before you, suspended above an impossibly deep chasm. You cannot see cavern walls in any direction, just darkness. Columns of stone rise up out of the pit to support the bridge, while others tower upward from it, disappearing into the darkness above. You think you can make out a pinprick of light somewhere at the opposite end. How how long of a bridge are we talking here? It's hard to tell because it's so dark. Do okay. you? Who's an elf? Is anyone an elf? I'm an elf. There we go. <laughs> Let's see what those eyes see. <laughs> what do my special eyes see? What do your elf eyes see? Uh, elf okay. eyes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Actually, this might still be beyond your infravision, but. I'm going to say you can probably see that this bridge is basically just straight on until what looks like you can kind of, I'm just going to say you can make out some more of it, uh, some sort of uh, cave mouth, some sort of opening to probably the outside world. 
Looks like looks like that might be a way out. Should we risk it? Looks awfully scary. Looks spooktastic. Don't fall off. Is, is this a, do we see any other way? I mean, if that's the only way, we kind of should go, shouldn't we? We either go this way or we turn back and burn it all with fire. Uh, no, I'm not turning around. <laughs> then I, lead on, Randall. Uh, uh, okay. Lead on, Randall. I'll start running across <laughs> start the running. bridge? <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so this is a modified version of a chase sequence. Uh, chases actually are a thing in BX, which is interesting, but they're not particularly involved, so I kind of took the idea of one and added some stuff to it. Ho, oh, you can either spend your entire t- uh, I don't want to say turn, because turn is something else in this, but turn uh, moving, running across the bridge. And you can do that, and you will make a certain amount of distance. Uh, you can also uh, move and then use an action, which would be either uh, ranged attack, melee attack, or some other random thing, like using an item, drinking a potion, stuff like that. Uh, or you can cast a spell, and then you can't move. Uh, so, those are your the things <laughs> that you could do on your round. Uh, I think Inger would like to run as far as he can with, yeah. uh, and I'll put this in your ear, DM, uh, with the the bug that I want to get to as far across the bridge as I can. And then is the bridge made of rope and stuff? Wood? Could I no, set no, it on no. fire? No, no, no. It's all made of stone. It's a stone bridge. Okay. But I could hit it with my mace and break the stone. I mean, that's a long shot. Never mind. But... <laughs> Uh, you could try to hit so like I said there's there's columns that come up from beneath that support the underside of the bridge and then there's columns that start at the where you are on the bridge and go up to the ceiling you assume mm-hmm. uh, you could try to knock out one of those those rising columns if you'd like okay maybe when we're closer to the other side of the edge we can try and stop that from them following us it's a thought all right. But yes, I'm running. Okay. I think the rest of them are running with me, correct? Yep. I'm running. Okay, running, everyone's running. and I and we're going to assume Elson is probably spending their full movement to run too cuz I don't want to you know, I don't want to assume. No, Elson stayed back to fight cuz that's what Elson did. <laughs> Elson, listen. <laughs> Be our uh, distraction. Michaela gave us strict instructions that if there were any boxes, Elson was just going to open them. <laughs> so <laughs> Anything, anything seemingly dangerous, Elson would just do that. So we know that if that comes up, that'll be what happens. Wait, seriously? Yeah, you know, I'm pretty sure Elson would have dived into the horde of zombies. Yeah. That just attacked them left and right. Noble sacrifice. Yes. Uh, While well, everyone's running, Elson's just going at a leisurely jog. Elson's just running a foot behind us. To slow down whatever might catch us. Yeah. Let's uh, let me log some junk here. We've got anger, Randall, uh, Davis's character, and Elsa. Okay. You do that. I actually should have had uh, you guys roll to see who gets to go first, but we won't do that this round. Because I forgot uh, the Gabos and their sorceress companion are like, we are getting out of here. They don't feel like fighting these zombies anymore. Or there might be one of those things where one of the goblins is like, you're the Elson of this group, and then they push one of the, one of their companions into the horde of zombies while the rest of them run. <laughs> Uh, so I like it. I yeah. like it. Uh they are all running across the uh bridge and most of them are running full tilt. They are going to get pretty much to where you guys are. Uh the Yeah, I think that's probably what they're going to do cuz they're just freaked out. Uh they zombos are going to 
uh, the ones that were attacking the goblinoids move onto the bridge and move towards the uh, like different pillars that are on the bridge and just start slamming themselves against the pillars with all of their undead might. And when they do that, you see the pillars sort of shake a little bit and then stones start to fall off of them. Uh, far behind in the uh, chamber, this black gook has pooled into this giant mass at the foot of the statue and is just starting to surge forward towards the bridge and it just like envelops the zombies that were in front of it. Just rolls right over them and continues forward and is now sort of getting to the bridge and you just see the bulk of this creature sort of rise up covering the entire I want to say like 10 by 10 foot wide doorway so it just looks like this black like liquid sheet and then you see sort of just tendrils start to like ooze uh, around the corners as this thing starts to plop um, onto the bridge and move its way across towards you uh, it's chasing us it's chasing my, us. Yeah. My zombie friends, no. Yeah. Anyway, rocks are falling. Uh, Elson. <laughs> Elson, sacrifice <laughs> yourself. <laughs> Save us. Run, run I heard faster. there was a box over there. Go open Go it. Go open it. Look, a box. Elsa, you have to stop running to open this box. There's a mysterious switch in the middle of this bridge. Pull it, please. <laughs> uh, rocks are falling. Everyone doesn't die unless you fail a save. So... Uh, what I want is, let me check my notes on this. Uh, each of you roll 1d6 twice and tell me what numbers you get. Or actually, I'm sorry, each of you roll 1d6 once and tell me what numbers you get. Four. Okay. Three. Three. All right. Uh, why can't I remember your character's name, Davis? Cramble. Cramble. <laughs> there, I have it written down. I just wrote it down in a weird place. Oh, Cramble. Oh, Cramble. Uh, make a save versus petrification. Now, you might be asking me why petrification. There, there are no Medusas around here. I was reading an old BX adventure the other day, and there was, like, a rock fall trap, and it was like, if the rocks fall, the character should make a save versus petrification. And I'm like, that's weird. I'll use it. <laughs> Okay. So you want to so, roll over your petrification number. You get to add wisdom to your roll. Wisdom I modifier, got a 19. Which is over the number. 13. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, I hope it's over the number. Goodness. Which is relatively low, so I was kind of worried there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> so you did it. Uh, or Basically, uh, the, this pillow shakes and a rock falls, and you dive forward as it slams into the bridge behind you, uh, taking a small chunk out of the bridge and sort of tumbling over the side falling into darkness congratulations you didn't die i think that was a medusa guys there's a medusa i felt a medusa on me why are you talking keep running <laughs> okay uh we are on to round two uh i need you got someone to roll initiative for the group unless anyone's casting a spell no spells. Okay, I didn't no know. spells. Huh. I can roll initiative. Sure. D six. <clears throat> yep. Five. Hey, you succeeded. Past both of the other groups of combatants. So, oh, goodness. There's uh, the, there's rocks falling. There's these these zombos are slamming into these pillars. Uh, a few chunks of the bridge have already been taken away. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me roll a thing. Uh, one of the goblinoids is squished by a falling rock. Yeah. There are now actually only two of them on the bridge. Oh, no. Uh, two of them and a spellcaster, right? Yes. Uh, they're about the area where you guys are at because they also did a full run. Uh, they don't seem very happy that you're there. 
I mean, we're all about to die. No one should be happy. <laughs> Maybe it's general unhappiness. But, but yeah, you guys get to act first. What would you like to do? Run. Run. I'm going to walk up to the spellcaster and say, if you could just hold that thing back for us, that'd be great. And I'm going to smack him in the knee with my mace to try and slow him down. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll an attack roll. Oh, no. Uh, ooh, not good. Um, seven plus one, eight. N no. Okay. <laughs> eight does not hit. I mean, I it's a wizard. and run. You can, but then, well, like I said, you can move your full movement, or you can move half that distance and also make an attack, either ranged or melee. Wow. Which is oh, what I did. Okay, okay. So I made an attack, and then I'm going to turn and run. <laughs> okay. Nate wouldn't even hit Randall. What the hell? <laughs> hey, I'm Dang. trying. I'm, I, it's all dice rolls. It's not me, guys. That's such a hard burn. <laughs> I can't even believe it. So, <laughs> so, uh, so Randall is doing a full run, I assume. Yes. Yes. He's uh, a coward. Uh, Elson's gonna do full run unless anyone wants Elson to do anything that wouldn't is not self sacrifice. Um, Elson no, runs, runs headlong into the ooze, right into it. Uh, I will point out that the more of these zombies that are slamming into these pillars, the more rocks that are falling, and the more rocks that you have to dodge. So, if anyone would like to stop and destroy a zombie, that would mean less rocks. Can I? Uh, can I shoot an arrow at a zombie? You definitely can. I'll shoot an arrow at a zombie. Cramble. Where, where are those zombies in relationship to us? Uh, they're a little farther back on the bridge, but they're still sort of in the same general area because there's there's just columns every like five right. or ten feet along this bridge. I rolled a tasty eight. Oh, man, you guys <laughs> are. <laughs> Actually, wait, okay. that might hit. Hold on, zombies are really easy to hit. Seven plus one. <laughs> exactly what I rolled. <laughs> Ooh. How do I convert armor class? I think... You said 20 minus, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Don't go there. Uh, oh, uh, ooh. See, one of the things I have done... Let's pause for the audience real quick. One of the things I have done is I have gone through the little... Uh, you can download a, a rich text file version of an update of the monster manual, which is great because then you can edit it because it's a text file. So I've gone through and changed a bunch of the monster's armor classes so that they're ascending instead of descending. Uh, but I forgot to do that for zombie. Unless I did and its armor class is actually that, but I don't think that's the case. I think that means its armor class is like 11, but I'm just going to make sure real quick because I don't want to deny you a hit. I rolled an eight, so I mean, I'm not. I know it's just zombies are really easy to hit, so it's one of those things where I'm like, I should probably check because they're they're really easy to hit. Uh, this is a. Oh uh, come on, you can do it. Load, 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 load. Ooh, that's slow. Hey. Okay, you do not hit, but man, you're real close. <laughs> Uh, I almost got him, guys. The arrow zips past the creature, flying off into the pit. Kingsmill's with us too, correct? Oh yeah, Kingsmill is with you. I'm assuming okay. that she is. She's running. running. Yeah. Kingsmill, we need you to slow down those zombies. <laughs> no, not for all the liquor of the world. <laughs> and there's, I'm guessing, there's no zombies in front of us, right? So. I think I saw uh, no. a keg over there. <laughs> I think back there with that giant goo monster, I think, yeah, I think I saw some, I think I saw some uh, ale over there. If you want yeah, to Yeah, I think you should out. go check it out. I think you should go check it out. And also while you're there, <laughs> kick some of them zombies in their shins. Yeah. So. The zombies continue bashing stuff and the gabos continue uh anger and cramble are both going to get attacked by gabos but bef actually before that gets to happen or no i guess it gets to happen at the same time tight initiative is weird uh i need 
each of you guys to roll 1d6 and tell me what you get. One. Four. Three. Okay. That's not how we count, guys. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Uh... So we got the anger and cramble. You rolled a one and a three, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Make me saves versus petrification. Seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, oh what? <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Are you two sharing dice? <laughs> I fired from across the country. Woo! Woo so we're alive. The one of the goblinoids uh, runs forward and then goes to attack Anger, and as he raises his club and is about to strike you, a rock just falls on him. <laughs> oh god! Uh, and then you look around and dodge nimbly out of the way before a rock would have fallen on you. Yes. Uh. Anger nimble, that's what they call me. Yep, anger the nimble. Uh, so, uh, Davis, Cramble yeah. manages to easily dodge out of the way of another falling rock. However, a goblinoid comes after him as well. The last goblinoid. The last unicorn goblinoid. <laughs> What's your armor class? Uh, you know, I have a spreadsheet. I should just know the answer to that question. 13, I think. Okay. That is going to hit. Oof. Cramby. Oof. Take three points of damage. Oh, boy. <laughs> Cramby boy. Who knows? Oh, I forgot you named your camels. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 that makes me want to kill your camels because now they have names. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so anyway the so that goblin goblinoid tries to tries to bash at you but you dodge out of the way of that as well you're feeling pretty good about all this uh, the wizard runs forward and points at the uh, the goo monster that's ro rolling down this bridge uh, and a blast of magical energy shoots out of their hand and slams into it uh, the creature recoils like it the the blast of magical energy hits it and seems to make a big weird like divot in it uh, and the creature recoils a little bit and gives this gurgled like groan and then recollects itself and surges forward once more and the caster just uh, yells uh, in a female voice fe uh, female human sounding voice uh, magic can hurt it and that's what they do on their turn uh, let's see, rocks were falling, that was a thing uh, you also see as this ooze creature surges forward across the bridge, continuing to follow you like, it's kind of like most of its bulk is contained to the bridge as it squeezes in between these pillars uh, and then like, bits of it slosh off over the sides uh, and behind it you see these uh, skeletons carrying torches trying to climb up onto this thing and just plunge their torches down into its back or the top of it. It's an amorphous blob. It's a little weird. Uh, and the skeletons are slowly getting like absorbed into it as they're doing this, but they're still just plunging the fire into it. And as this is happening, you're hearing this sort of high-pitched whine that seems to be emitting from the goop creature itself. It doesn't like it. Next round. Roll initiative. You're One, Davis. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, Davis. Hey, I'm saving against these old Medusas. I gotta save my luck. Maybe everyone will roll a one. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> that was not what happened. So, <laughs> uh, zombies actually get to go first. 
they continue slamming in. At this point, a lot of these columns are completely falling apart. And there's just rocks falling, and there's dust falling from the ceiling, and the whole cavern seems to be shaking, but it's actually just the bridge that's shaking. It's great. <laughs> uh, so I need, let's see how many people are still here. There's one goblin, a whiz robe, you four, and King's Mill. Uh, yeah, everybody roll uh, 1d6 and tell me what number you get. Three. Four. Four. Hey. Uh, Anger, I need you to make me a save versus petrification. Okay. Well, I, I rolled a four also. Does that mean me as well? No, I rolled a three. Yeah, so you rolled a three. Oh. Yeah. You, were, oh, okay. you were below 50%. The only uh, one. That is a four. Which is not good. Nope. <laughs> so uh, you have two options because this is happening before your turn. Mm -hmm. I wrote this in a cool way. You can either uh, be slowed down uh, and take less damage from this rock falling. Or you can continue at whatever pace you would like and risk more damage from the rock. I will slow down and take less damage. Okay. My damage die has been lowered. Will it be enough to not kill you? I don't know. How many hit points do you have left? Five. Okay. Ah. I rolled the minimum damage. You take one point of damage. Woo. <laughs> Anger. Oh, guys. <laughs> Run. So yeah, this you're you you see this you basically look up and you see the column right next to you is sort of like shifting weirdly, mm -hmm. and you see as this sto piece of stone breaks off and starts to fall, and you kind of like dodge backward towards where the the goop monster is, uh, and this thing just clips your leg and hurts you, but not too badly. Uh, so you cannot, on your turn, you cannot you move your full movement. You can move half, or you can take an action. Those are, will be your two options. Okay. Uh, so, oh, you know, I didn't play any music. I should start playing music. I knew I was forgetting something. I always forget some little thing, right? Uh, let's throw up the battle music, since this is a tense moment. Sure. There we go. That sounds good. Uh, yeah. You guys are. That's uh, that's it for the zombies. The goblin is going to attack somebody. Or actually, oh. Boop. Oh, okay. Da -da 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 The goblin's going to try to attack Cramble. Get away from me, Gobbo. <laughs> it's crazed. He doesn't even know what to do. He misses. Ah! ah! Yeah. <laughs> he runs yeah. up to you. He runs up to <laughs> his gnashing his teeth and swinging a club. Out of his mind. Out of his gourd. Uh, but he can't get to you. What is wrong with you? Uh, it is now... Oh, the wizard is going to uh, see that uh, she looks and she's uh, she's just like, oh. Fire can also hurt it because she's seen what the, the skeletons are doing. And she looks around and she's like, oh, I have no minions left. I have like one guy. Okay, I guess I'll leave. <laughs> uh, and runs. It is now you guys' turns. I'm gonna cast the spell. Oh, okay. You can't move anywhere if you cast the spell. Yeah, I know. Okay. How far away is the, the, the... Is it gonna overtake me? It is... No, it's not in danger of that. It's not close enough yet. Okay, I'm gonna cast the spell. Oh, but shoot it with a magic missile. Sure. Kaplam. Uh, magic missile does not roll to hit because it's magic missile. Nah, one d six plus one. Nice. Oh fuck yeah, five. Nice. Plus one, six. Oh okay, that's even better. 
Okay. Take that, you big, you big pile of pitch. It screeches. Like weird air pockets, air pockets open up on it, and you hear strange sounds come out of it before they fill again. Magic can hurt it. Magic can hurt it. Is Randall screaming out? Would mag Would uh, read magic hurt it? Yes, read its magic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually have any spell slots, so I can't. <laughs> oh no. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I did have read. I did have read magic up, but I'm pretty sure there's nothing to read in here. Not in this hallway now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would is Randall just gonna keep running full tilt? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. He's just running. Uh, so Randall and King's Ball are gonna do that. Randall doesn't attack unless he has to. Uh, Randall, Kingsmill, and Elson both run full tilt. At this point, you are actually getting very close to the opening. You can tell it is a cave mouth of some sort. Uh, and you're pretty sure in the next round you're going to be able to get through. Like, I see it. It looks like an exit. Uh, Anger, what are you going to do with your turn? Anger is fed up with these zombies trying to kill him with rocks, and he's going to uh, he's going to turn undead hey. and try to send them back down into the abyss. Sure. And uh, basically, I want him to stop rocking the boat until I get off of the boat, and okay. then they can destroy this blob as much as they want. <laughs> but so, yeah, so let's see. I'm looking up turn undead, and it depends on the monster hit die. So mm -hmm. I'm level three. So if monster hit die is one or two they are automatically turned. If it's two star, which is monsters with a special ability, I like paralyzing touch, immunity to normal weapons, or three, I need to roll 2d6. I believe that these guys only have one hit die. I'm gonna check, but I'm pretty sure you are. I'm pretty sure you're gonna auto turn them. Sweet. Uh, let's check the monster manual. Zombies. <laughs> Z is for zombies. Z is for zombies. Zombies have two hit dice. Okay, so they're automatically turned. Auto turned. Uh, the zombies immediately stop what they're doing. Uh, as you, how do you turn them, by the way? Um, I hold up my holy symbol and a single tear down my face. I'm like, I thought we were on the same team, but be gone! Your holy symbol of... glows. What uh, what god do you worship, by the way? Just out of curiosity. Uh, we, we Jass. We Jass. <laughs> oh, We Jass has a cool holy symbol. It's like the weird face thing. Okay. Uh, so it's like a half mask maybe I wear. I like take it off. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you hold up this holy symbol of this uh, crazy face, and the uh, this sort of purplish glow emanates from it. The zombies uh, see it and cower. They sort of are like, oh, and sort of begin shuffling back. And they stop hitting the pillars. And uh, I'm like out of breath. <sighs> okay, I got to get going. I'll do that next round. Okay. <laughs> uh, we, the, the goop surges forward. It destroys the remainder of the skeletons that were on top of it trying to burn it though it does seem to uh, do, use some effort in doing so. And continues forward. How far can it go? Get to there. Uh, at this point, um, Cramble and Anger. This thing is like right up in front of you. It's like real close. It's going to get to you. <laughs> it can't attack you yet, but it's real close. <laughs> Uh, and you just see this, this, these sort of um, pseudo pods of black sludge just extend from this thing, and you hear this weird glorping sound uh, as they come toward you. It seems completely undeterred by your holy symbol. Damn. New round. Roll. Uh, who would like to roll initiative? Me. That's a four. Nice. Okay. Um, Gabo and Wizrobe get to go first. 
because they rolled a six. Uh, but they the the Gabo is just like, ah, oh, screw this. Runs towards the exit. The the Wizrobe is just like, just like, how many hits could that thing take? And they start to run towards the exit as well. The uh, no rocks are falling this round. Uh, the zombies don't do anything. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, your team does a thing. What do you do? Uh, I run full tilt sure. if I can. Run I full tilt. I want to get to that exit. Like we gotta go. Run. Okay. Uh, Elson, Kingsmill, and Randall, you run out of a cave mouth. Some you're you're out in some nondescript patch of desert. You don't recognize okay. it, but you're outside. We're outside. You can see the sun. It's oh, it's really hot out here, but it's nice to see the sun. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. The, uh, Anger and Cramble, uh, you're not there yet, but you're getting there. The Wizard is about at the same place you are, maybe a little ahead of you. Actually, I think, yeah, about at the same place you are. Uh, new round. Or, I'm sorry, the, the group monster surges forward, but does not make it to you guys because you both ran full tilt. New round. Who would like to roll initiative? I can roll again. Okay. Six. Hey, yes. there you go. That's good. Uh, your team gets to go first. Yes, yeah, Saran was just like at the edge of the cave. He's like, "Come on, come on!" Cheer us on. Uh, yeah, I also run. Anger runs as fast as his little feet can carry him. Anger, we've got to go. <laughs> it's so I think close. We need to, I think we need to uh, destroy this bridge as well. Sorry. I think we need to destroy this bridge. We can't let that thing out into the open. It's got to stay here in the dark, dark abyss. Uh, You're I right, will, Anger. Yeah, I will point out that you guys are sort of near the exit. If you spend movement running, you can get right to the exit, but not out. Uh, if you spend your full movement, you can get out. So if you'd like to get right to the exit and then hit some pillars or something, feel free. That is what I, that is exactly what I would like to do. Okay. And hit some pillars. Uh, roll a strength ability check. So roll under your strength score. Uh, anger and Cramble, if you're doing that, do that as well. Oh, I rolled a 13 and my strength is 12. Whew. Can I shoot the pillar with a magic missile? I would like to attack the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you can, but if you cast a spell, you can't move. Oh, that's true. Mm. That will def I will tell you right now, that will be enough force to definitely knock one of the pillars, though. That will definitely work. And Just... it'll break the bridge down and the ooze can't follow mm, us anymore. Yeah. But you might, might break the bridge down, bridge down with us on it. Well, with Cramble, because uh, Cramble won't be as far forward as the rest of you guys. I run. I guess I'll also. Tr I got to roll under my strength score. Yes. Oh, that's actually. I think my strength isn't bad. It's not. It's thirteen. All right. Oh, and I rolled a twelve. You did. <laughs> Good. Uh, so. Anger and Cramble both run towards the exit to the last set of pillars and slam against them with their, you know, could do a good Oh, Anger, slam. I got your back. Uh, I knew you would. Let's combo <laughs> kick. Combo roundhouse kick this pillar. Yeah. Uppercut. With your strength combined, sure you're able you to uh, My hit. hands are all bloody because I, like, messed up. <laughs> Just, like, punching it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you hit it, and this pillar the, starts to rock back and forth, and stone starts to fall off of it. Uh, ooh, real the whole chamber sounded real bad. There's all sorts of there's a lot there's a lot less structural integrity than it used to have. 
Uh, chunks of the bridge are missing because of all the rocks that fell earlier. This is not good. Uh, and the whole thing's falling apart. The wizard, who is a little bit ahead of you guys, gets out in front of... Uh, sees that the thing's collapsing, and she's just like... She's like, good thinking, but it would be better if you delayed it. It's going to push one of you two to try and push you towards the creature. Oh no. Bad guys are evil. <laughs> Which one of you will it be? Let's find out. Anger. Typical, typical Jordan luck. What no! is what's what's your armor class? Twelve. Twelve. Oh, doesn't hit. Yes. Hey, let's this is cinematic and fun. Would you like to do anything as a reaction? To this, so this wizard lady tries to push you, and you just easily dodge out of the way. Um, can I like crouch down and have her like fall forward over me, and then stand up and like flip her down on her back? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, so she's prone, and I'm like, no, you stay. And I'll uh, take off running. <laughs> as you do that, she she flips over you and falls down onto the bridge right in front of this goop monster. As she's flipping over you. Her, like I said, she was wearing this uh, this mask. It's mm -hmm. sort of a stylized uh, face. Falls off and clatters uh, onto the bridge, sliding toward the exit where the rest of you are. Uh, and you see uh, this woman's actual face, and half of it is just all shriveled and old, and the other half looks like a, like a young woman. Um, get out of here, Baba Yaga. Get out of here. Uh, but she falls. And that's the end of her turn. Uh, the Let's see here. The creature, the, the goop monster, surges forward. Uh, and you just hear this woman scream as it envelops her. And her, so she's like screaming, she's screaming, and then her screams are just cut off as it, as the goo like goes over her face, and then you don't hear anything else from her ever again. <laughs> uh, uh, as this creature surges forward, uh, it's trying to get to you, but it is quite slow, so it's not there. Uh, let's see here, one of, oh yeah. Hold on, I'm going to do a thing real quick. I forgot there was actually one Gabo left. Ha! Uh, when you guys hit that pillar and a rock fell, it just squashed him. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you almost dodged it, but you didn't do it. <laughs> um, so, uh, start of another round. This is basically the end of this. Uh, unless you guys want to stay, <laughs> Cramble and Anger can get out because you can always act before the goo monster because it's not very fast can get out to the cave entrance as this place is collapsing do we need to do anything more to make it collapse you're pretty it... sure you don't the whole thing is okay. falling apart then i would i would like to scoop up this mask that was dropped sure and run out of the cave with my life sure uh you grab the mask run out uh, I will also run out. Sure. You run out. I'm oh. good. You guys made it out. <laughs> Thanks, Randall. Always great to see you, Randall. I mean, always great to see you, Randall. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing for me to read, so... <laughs> so I don't Just a beacon of hope for this party. <laughs> uh... As you, as you get out, you hear this uh, crashing sound as all of these rocks begin to fall and this uh, goop monster that's sort of surging forward. Um, a, a, it's coming to the end of the bridge and then a rock, a large piece of stonework from the pillar that you smashed into uh, hits the pillar adjacent to it, causing that pillar to fall. And it sends a pile of rocks hitting the end of the bridge itself which breaks it and at that point the bridge's structural integrity is just kaput and the whole bridge collapses and the goop monster just falls down into darkness lots of heavy breathing uh, anger raises his fist up in the air and goes yes 
Don't you forget about me. <laughs> Freeze frame on <laughs> anger as he's raising his fist up in the air. <laughs> probably the wondering how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> Randall is Wrecking definitely trash. the brain. <laughs> <laughs> who is who is the jock? Oh God! Crambles the jock. Mm. Crambles the jock. The brain is the worst because in the end he he stays a loner and just walks off by himself. Oh no, it's true. Anthony Michael Hall. Boy, buddy. <laughs> it's fine. Anthony Michael Hall grew up to be much better looking, so I don't feel bad. Uh, yeah. So you guys are outside. Let's uh. Your it is a it is a uh, clear. Storm's gone, huh? Yeah, storm's gone. It's a clear, clear day. Ooh, it's hot, but calm and silence. And you uh, you hear from over beyond the rock outcropping. I think I heard something from over there. Maybe they're over there. And coming out from beyond that rock cropping, it's all those retainers. Leading a very blind Jarmy. <laughs> Jarmy's still blind. Our camels? Do they have our camels? They do have your camels, yes. Anger goes, Bartholomew, I never thought I'd see you again. <laughs> Bartholomew spits. Classic Bartholomew. <laughs> spits again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wave him down. I'm like, we're over here, we're over here. Uh, uh. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Uh, not just us anymore. Uh, do they look like they were in a sandstorm, or have they been? Out oh yeah, for quite no, a while? they they okay. look like they were in a sandstorm. They look real beat up, but they so were. They're all covered in dust and like all like yeah, sandy white. Yeah, <laughs> but they were like, oh yeah, no, it. Uh, luckily, it it passed, and then we started looking for you guys, but we weren't really sure where to look, and then we heard that booming sound coming from that cave and decided to check it out. <laughs> yeah, that was one crazy sandstorm. Anger's like, Jarmy, check it out. I got this mask. You, oh wait, you can't. How's your eyes? <laughs> and Jarmy's like, you know, I can't see. <laughs> just give me, just give me a couple more days. And Anger's like, I could use a couple. I could use some healing and resting myself. <laughs> oh man. Um, Anger would like to go to Kingsmill and say, uh, did you see the, uh, the pic pictographs on the walls? There was, uh, there was a man with a crown. Did you see the crown, Kingsmill? Uh. Kind of grabs her by the shoulders and shakes her. Did you see the crown? Kingsmill! She's like, I was running from a scary ooze monster. Where's the crown? <laughs> Swear to me! Swear to me! <laughs> Uh, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, no. <laughs> um, Welcome to the quoting Batman stream. Yikes. <laughs> so Kings was like, I, I didn't get a good look. I, I was running from a giant, horrible monster and zombies and also goblins and also a wizard. There was a lot of things to run from. I understand. But I want you to know, just because I understand doesn't mean I'm not disappointed in you. And I turn and walk away. <laughs> Man, I think anger might be mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Mm, I think you have to go on timeout for that one. <laughs> Lose one thousand experience. <laughs> Lose a level. Oh no! Uh, so, you guys are back out in the desert. Whew. Get our bearings. Get your bearings. Kind of which way is which? Yeah, luckily you have a map and you have Kingsmill with you, who knows the desert okay. Basically, if you if you didn't have her or the map, you'd probably be in some kind of trouble. But because you have both, it's not so bad. Uh, cool. Let me open up my little map document here. So how far are we away from whatever's next? Oh God. Uh, looks like you're two days travel from the Tower of the Sands. You're about halfway there. Did someone say tower? <laughs> Cramble's interested. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, didn't you know we were going to the tower? Yeah, no, I'm just uh, I'm excited. That's all. Sure. I want to see. I want to get to that there tower. See what it's like. <laughs> you sure like towers? Why? Do you not well, like towers? I mean, they're tall, but they're nothing special. Look, 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 Randall, <laughs> Randall, <laughs> Randall, my friend, come here. Come here. If, I, you, if you talk just... to a mole, he might like tires or towers better than I do. <laughs> Imol, do you like towers? Hey, what? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> towers, right? Towers are the bomb. You can always, like, find a shit ton of rings and stuff in there. Yeah, you can find lots of rings. Sometimes you can, like, make a tower and put rings in there, and then you can go get them again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Tower. You get a bunch of rings, they're like brass knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> put them all together. <laughs> Uh, I love the dichotomy of Emil and Randall. <laughs> good, good difference between those two characters. They're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> They're both the worst in their own way. <laughs> so, you guys are, uh, yeah, you guys are out in the desert, shooting the breeze, as it were. Uh, uh, we should probably rest after that ordeal. Did any, did any of those weird sand children get out? <laughs> I think I saw the last one get crushed by a rock. Then the onions uh, pop, pines in. There were sand children? <laughs> there were more sand children? Oh no, it's an epidemic. Anand is really upset that he missed the sand children. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been there. You guys could have used my expertise in dispatching <laughs> children of the base. <laughs> their uh protection from the sun like this cave entrance made of fully collapsed or is there like enough that we could camp out in there if we wanted to to take a breather or should we do we because i don't want to be out in the elements i guess you probably couldn't there isn't enough of an overhang to get too much shade uh you'd have to like go inside and inside is just a big chasm now because the bridge has been collapsed mm -hmm. i think we need to press on find some shade Drink yeah some uh, I don't see a lot. It's just a sand. Um, King's Melody, do you know which way we should be going? She looks around and she looks at the map and she's like, uh, I think uh, this this way? And she points. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this way. Let's this This should be the direction of the tower. Tower of the Sands. The yes. Sand Tower. <laughs> she's, sand Spire. She's just like, yeah, no, that's that's what. It, let's go. <laughs> she just uh, great architectural achievement to build a tower in the middle of a desert. <laughs> the great so column you, of the dunes. So yes. do, you know what the, do you know what the hell that was, Kingsmail? I mean, it wasn't on the map. Uh, I caught a couple of things from the writing when we were in that hallway uh, not not the it, large mural am I right King's Mill I didn't get a chance to see <laughs> I tried uh, it mentioned something about tar and an enchantment a mistake I don't know it was weird uh, definitely old but if listen, if we had had more time to study it, I would have been all about studying it. I was interested in studying it, but first we were being chased by flesh-eating beetles, and then there was fire everywhere, and then there was zombies and goblins and ooze, and it's just yeah. there was no time where I could have sat down with it. I was, I'm really frustrated. And she sort of gets on her camel and starts to go <laughs> off. Wait, wait, Kingsmail, come back. I seriously don't know how I'm still alive. So many things could have killed me. Oh my god. You were running really fast. <laughs> yeah, I, I run a lot. <laughs> you really, it you, looks like you do it's a lot of cardio. <laughs> I don't want to, but I feel like I have to. <laughs> Anchor says, everybody, I think we need to put our game faces on. And then I slide down the mask that I just acquired on my face. Sure. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> no, nothing. Uh, Wait, it's not magical. <laughs> he should have to go into timeout because of that one too. <laughs> Lose a level. Um, oh no! And I hop on my uh, my camel Bartholomew with Jarmy. 
and we follow King's will. Okay, so it's not a magical mask. Good. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't do anything. It didn't horribly hurt, do anything to you. It didn't do anything good or bad when you put it on. Nothing magical happened when you put it on. How do you do? You attune to magic items? Do you just know they work? You just know they work. I, okay. I, it's and not, I'm not as... getting a vibe from this one, mm, or from this object. I don't. I don't think so. You don't necessarily know. Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, I if guess it, if no it is skill, magical, like, I can't, what do I roll or? Yeah, it, there's also a thing where like certain magic items can be used by certain classes and not other classes. So mm, it's possible okay. that this is a magic item that like if a magic user tried to use it, something would happen. But you're a cleric, so nothing happens. Uh, Randall, you want to try this mask on? It's really really awesome. Uh, looks kind of dirty. Well, no, no. It, I mean, that's just that's just like the skin flakes from the inside of the mask. But if you clean those out, it's completely oh. fine. But I mean, yeah. the sun's so bright, and I think it would really like you're you're able to cast and read magic a lot better without the sun brighten your eyes. You can use this mask. Uh, in that case, definitely not. Uh... <laughs> uh, I'll try that mask on. Sure. All right. It looks spooky. Cramble, you're it's really. Ding Pretty dang nice. elf. Yep. Okay. You put the mask I on. I am an elf. I put the mask on. Put the mask on. Uh, you gain. Do I look handsome? You do look. Well, you look. You look pretty good. It's so. It's like a bronze. I think the last session I said it was ivory, but that was a misspeak. I'm gonna retcon that. So it's bronze, and it's carved to look like a stylized face with all these intricate sort of designs around it. Uh, so, Cramble. You may learn one additional first level spell of your choice and cast it once per day using the mask. Whoa. You're welcome. Yo, this mask is insane. I look like some sort of bronze statue with legs that's walking, <laughs> fleshy <laughs> legs, as opposed to bronze legs. Is this the same? character that has the belt of strength that's like super swole or is that a different that's, character? that's onions <laughs> oh okay sorry i'm getting my characters confused i'm sorry onions <laughs> onions <laughs> elson elson uses the staff of commands to <laughs> no to no. undo it <laughs> no El we know elson would never do that yeah i can't <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, so, uh, you head off into the desert. Let's, um, I want you guys to roll, uh, on the travel table a couple times. First of all, uh, first night of rest. So, like I said, two days travel. First night, uh, roll. If you're, when you're resting, you roll 1d3 hit points to heal. So if you're down some hit points, feel free to do that. Uh, okay. Elson is down some hit points, so I'm going to roll for them. Two hit points for Elson. Is Jarmy blind still? Uh, when Jarmy wakes up in the morning, Jarmy is no longer blind. Hell yeah! Cool. cool. Uh, so I can see! Jarmy, you can see again? Everything's a white blur. I think my vision's getting better. Instead of a dark blur, everything's a nice white blur. Ah, oh, just like Han Solo okay. coming out of carbonite. You know, I thought that <laughs> blindness was, was going to be coming. I thought I was making that up. That was funny. No, that was a reference. <laughs> You're not original. Nothing is original. <laughs> Simpsons did it. Plagiarism. Um. Uh, so now let's let me pull up my little chart here. And I'm going to have you guys roll on a table for me in a second. Yay. Oh. Wait, this is one that determines our uh, next encounters and all that stuff. Yes, but I'm going to... I kind of have two variations on it. One is the one that has many dungeons, and one is the one that doesn't. Uh, so I'm going to have you roll on the one that doesn't to keep us moving along. Uh, but yeah, roll 1d20. Uh, oh yeah, I'll do the first one. Yeah, go ahead. Eight. Eight. Okay. Hey, that's fun. Uh, that means we're going to die. Yeah. Roll me 
1d6. I'll roll that. Two. Two. Uh, you guys come across a small, mm, kind of a uh, an old riverbed. I think I have a description of it. An ancient riverbed, shrouded by morning fog, small trees and shrubs grow around it. Uh, the fog is kind of thick. You don't see any water, though. But the ground is not completely dried out, and there is some plant life. Uh, the camels take this as a great opportunity to graze and snack on some of the plant life. Uh, like I said, it's very foggy. But uh, Anand, while you while Anand is walking around, the uh, checking it out, you hear a chirping sound, and look down to see a large, maybe not that large. You still look down to see it, but it looks like a kind of like a grasshopper type creature, but its carapace is uh, kind of multicolored. It's one of those things where depending on what angle you look at it from, it kind of has a different tint to it. And it ranges from sort of a, a turquoise blue to like a like a rusty red. Uh, but it's like, it's big. It's like a foot long. Uh, and it's little antennae are moving around. And, it see, and it's sort of, as you've walked up to it, it makes a chirping sound at you. What are we gonna do? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's a thing right in front of you. I don't know if you want to do anything uh, with it. Anand, right? Yeah, it's in front of Anand. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you should get close to it. Oh, uh, guys! You should probably back away. You know? I think it's a pet of the the children <laughs> of the sand. We're, we're in a desert. Everything in the desert can kill you. It's a desert. It's a desert cat. <laughs> Everything in the desert can kill me, Sick. including you, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> Always be on your toes. Trust no one. <laughs> King's mail. Back away. Back away. <laughs> Step away from the weird creature. And we'll just walk around it. Hopefully everything will be fine. Have you seen these before, King's mail? Mm. Have you seen these before, King's mail? Uh, yeah. Well, who would have been asking that question? Was it Charlie or Anger? <laughs> now we know. It was, it was Anger. <laughs> uh, King's mail is just like, uh... I feel like I've seen them, but I've never actually been this close to one. What are they called? Oh, uh, what what did the natives call them? And uh, I want to know, are they delicious? Eh? You want to eat it? Uh, maybe the camels oh, do. Oh, yeah, she knows. Uh, that was a very good intelligence check. She's like, yeah, I remember them saying something about how they're called pernicorns, which is weird because it sounds like unicorn, but they're nothing like unicorns. Yeah, they don't look like a like a horse at all. No, the the nomads like them though. I guess no one talks about them negatively. They said they were useful, but I didn't quite catch how. Hello, pernicorn. Good day. It makes cricket sounds at you, but they're very loud because it's like a one foot long cricket. Seems like we've got ourselves a lucky cricket. Do you uh, know the way out of this desert? It makes cricket it sounds at you. <laughs> I wave my hands at it. Be careful. It might bite your face When you off. wave your hands, it, it hops back away from you, startled a little bit. I put my hands down and I make cricket noises at it. At it. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, make a... <laughs> I take out a violin. <laughs> <laughs> Make a I... uh, cost or charisma ability check. Okay. Uh, what do I do for charisma ability? You roll check? under your charisma score. Oh, I definitely did. I rolled a nine. All right. You on and make surprisingly realistic cr cricket noises. <laughs> this is a very good job. And the creature hops back over to him, regarding him. I make more cricket noises. Sure. <laughs> Uh, I offer it some rations. Uh, it doesn't seem interested in your rations, but it does climb up onto Anand. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> are we, are uh, we supposed to kill it, Kingsmill, or...? Hello! <laughs> it's just a really big bug, so if yeah, you're grossed out by creepy. bugs, it's like a really big bug. But it's not like trying to eat you or anything, it just thinks it's nice that you're making cricket noises, so it's like clinging to like your leg. <laughs> I like... And making I, cricket noises. I want it to be like a parrot on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I like wave at it. Uh, Kingsville, is this supposed what do to I, happen? What do I do with this? And I, I pointed my legs. She's like, I don't know. I, the nomads said they're useful in the deep desert, but I don't. I, I didn't spend a lot of time in the deep desert. I was usually at dig sites. Uh, maybe it likes water. I take out my water skin. Uh, it does react to that. It's a little, it's a little antennae, uh, point towards the water skin, and it gets up and sort of nudges I'll up like, against the water skin. I'll like open the water skin. You like, you want some water? <laughs> it, I mean, it can't drink out of the water skin because it has an insect mouth. I'll pour some water. Sure. It's a little. You pour water onto the ground, and its little <laughs> antennae like point towards the puddle of water, and then it climbs down off your leg and drinks the water. Like, oh my god. It's a li it's a living dousing rod. Uh, it can find us water? Well, I think it can find us water. That would definitely help. Maybe if I keep making cricket noises, it'll follow us and show us where water is. <laughs> as long as it doesn't like bite us at night. You wouldn't always, bite us always at, right? with the corn? <laughs> the protocorn makes chirping noises at you and climbs onto your back. <laughs> <laughs> right before it stabs you with its stinger. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it produces a stinger out of nowhere and stabs you with it. It's Safe useful. versus death. <laughs> it's useful because it kills all your enemies for you. <laughs> I think I have made a new friend. Uh, and a fine friend to make. I now can we find it... some water? I shall name it... What should I name it? What? I think Dowsing is uh, a great name. Dowsing? What was the name of that? What was the name of that? That uh, that other that other thief. The the other thief. That other thief. Remember when I first met you guys? You mean Sigrid? Oh. Oh no, no not the, Sigrid. The one who ran away. Um. Oh, Farid. Farid, yeah. Farid. Sure, let's name it Little Fareed. <laughs> then it's go, definitely going to backstab you. <laughs> See, I feel like the bug wouldn't like that. I'm pretty Should sure I... Fareed's were bad no matter where you go. Should I name it Little 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 Randall? <laughs> Fareed's a great name. <laughs> little Randall it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, you guys head, uh, or if you look around, you can actually, um, if you pay attention to this, to, to little Randall's antennae, uh, there <clears throat> is a point, is oh, a spot on the riverbed that it will lead you to that is just a little more moist, uh, and the, uh, it's like more muddy if you dig there, there is a small deposit of water. Which is enough for like, I don't know, you have a pretty big group, but it's enough for everybody to drink for like a day, so you don't have to use rations or water for today. Also, I hope someone's keeping track of how much water you have, because that's important. <laughs> yeah, we all bought a bunch of water skins. Yeah. So, should you decrease the water skins by one from the day before, or...? Yeah, you've been traveling since you left the Oasis. You have gone... I'm gonna check my tile, my hex thingies. Let's bring up the map. Boop. Uh, one, two... Three... So you've gone, you've, you've traveled for three days, so you've used three days worth of water and rations. And then this is the fourth day in which you don't have to use any water. So that's three per person, sorry. right? That's, that's three per person? Yeah. Of rations and water? Correct. Alrighty. Hmm. 
All right. I'll play your game. <laughs> That's good. You're already playing it. This is uh, BXD and D. You're playing it currently. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so you guys get to. Um, you know, actually, I'm not going to have you roll again on the random encounter chart. I'm just going to bring you to your destination. But you, I assume you go off, you travel for another day. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You travel. And... Where are you? Sand, 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 sand. That's others. Oh, Okay. As you ride farther into the deep desert, or actually I should switch back from the map. No, it, maybe this makes sense. No, I'll switch back from the map. There we go. As you ride farther into the deep desert to the distant brass hills to the north, which you had sort of been able to see on the horizon, uh, disappear as the sand du dunes grow in size. You crest peaks 100 feet high as light winds whip around you. Then, from between the dunes, you see a broken gray spire pointing toward the sky like a bony finger. Uh, oh my god, guys, it, there it is! <laughs> the tower! Uh, hey... Cramble speeds up on his camel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Jordan, why don't you roll me 1d6? Sure. One. One. Uh, it looks like the this is a tall tower. And you can see it has at least three, five levels to it. Maybe there was more at one point, but it's broken off. Uh, I assume you ride down towards it. Uh, can we do like a scout? kind of look and see if there's uh, quicksand or anything that might be coming after us. I don't know. Who would you like to send to do that? You know... King's Mail. No. Jarmy sounds like he's he's up for doing that, even though he's got a terrible wisdom. Why not? He can see once again. He can see. He wants to put his eyes to the test. Jarmy, go test out those eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure they're working right. All right. Darn tootin'. Uh, as Jarmy heads, trudges downward towards the tower, uh, we're going to take a quick break, like 10 minutes probably. We're going to actually be ending a little early today. We're going to end in uh, at 6.30. That's the plan. The plan is to end at 6.30. So so Michaela misses as little, 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 bleh, as little as possible, and Jordan gets to do his stuff that he's doing. Yay. Uh, but yeah, we're going to take a 10-minute break, and we're going to be right back. Uh, hope you guys are enjoying the show and we'll see you in a moment.
And we're back. We're back with Seekers of the Scorpion Crown on the Greyhawk channel. I'm Lex. I'm joined by my fantastic cast of <laughs> Wild Engineer, Jordan, and Davis. They have escaped the goo guy. That gooey, the gooey boy got, got away from, from him. Uh, and have made it to the Tower of the Sands. How big did I say it was? Like five, six stories? Something like that? Five stories, you said? Five yeah. stories. Five full stories. All right. Uh, Could have been taller, but it might have broken down. Yeah. Uh, Johnny... <laughs> Whatever, Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jordan, shut up. <laughs> Uh, so Jarby is going to check it out. Jarby's checking it out. Okay. Uh, you can spend a what turn ho? to do that. I should actually probably look up in the book how searching works. Oh. Mm. Oh, this is. Bless you. Oof. Okay, let's see here. Adventuring rules. There's something in here for search. Ah, there it is. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, wait, that's saving throws. Oh, let's see. Dungeons often have hidden features and me mechanisms, such as secret doors and traps. Uh, adventurers can spot these by searching. Blah, 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 blah. They pick an area to search. Searching takes one turn. Oh, if a character is searching in the right location, they... Okay, roll 1d6. Alright, sorry. Rolling 1d6. Three. Oh, I'm sorry. The referee should always roll for the character searching. Well, looks <laughs> like I shouldn't have had you do that. I'm gonna roll. Okay. Uh... So, no patches of quicksand. Uh, he looks around the base of the tower. It doesn't seem like it's about to fall apart. Um, looks relatively safe to enter, although there are chunks of wall missing along most of the floors. Uh, and there's areas where you can see inside. It's very uh, sand-swept kind of location. And a lot of the tower seems like it used to be covered in different... Uh, carvings but the elements have kind of worn most of that away all right i'll uh i'll do those one of those shrill whistles where people put their fingers in their mouth because i can't do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i'll whistle for them to come down and and join me because it's safe yeah. you guys hear that whistle <laughs> where'd that whistle come from weird randall did you hear that whistle I guess not. <laughs> Anybody else go down oh. that little Sorry, what was that? Huh? <laughs> did you did you hear that whistle? Uh oh. no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we better keep waiting then. <laughs> and if Jarmy's not getting their attention, I guess he'll march back up the hill and try to like pull them down. And Charmy walks back up the 50 foot tall sand dune. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey Charmy, did you find anything? Yeah, it's it's uh it seems safe. There's some wind it's it's a ruined tower. I heard you were interested in towers. Let's go. Yeah, some very interested in towers. <laughs> All right, let's go. Check it out. It seems uh I didn't mean I I walked down there safely, so Cramble sprints down the dune. Cool. Cramble is very enthusiastic. Yes. <laughs> uh, you guys get tower to the, time. Yeah, you get to the base of the tower. You see what used to be perhaps a grand entrance, but has now real worn away by time and the elements. And it's just sort of a jagged opening into this first floor of this tower. Um, I... Uh, Jarmy cautiously walks in, uh, but I want to find like a good place for my camel in the shade of the tower. Sure, you could do that. Uh, hey, here's a question: Is everyone going to enter, or are some people going to wait outside? Ooh, because you guys got a bunch of retainers and stuff. 
<laughs> Let's pick sticks. Draw sticks. Draw straws. I mean, you can bring everybody in if you want. I'm just giving. I'm just presenting the idea to you. Hmm. I like this idea of not everybody going in, but I also like having both my characters with me. Yeah. Uh. Let's play, I'm gonna play Jarmy for a little bit. So Anger will uh, stay outside with Bartholomew the camel and maybe get like a campsite going. Like, I don't know if we can get like a fire going or something and for when we return out of the tower. He can uh, cook cook one of those uh, giant grasshoppers. You only have one. You gotta oh, eat okay. him. Well, we'll keep that one because we need it for water, but. <laughs> I guess we'll keep a little they, Randall. If there's two. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm definitely going to eat the other one. So No, not little Randall. <laughs> so would our retainers have to stay outside, or can we bring them in with us? Your choice. Um... Both Cramble yeah. and Onion will go inside. Yeah, I feel like Evil would definitely want to go inside, just in case, because he missed out on all the action. <laughs> so... Um... Oh, hey, you know what? I will also point out to you, uh, Wild, uh, you yes. just traveled for five days, so if you were trying to copy another spell into your spell book, uh, you would probably Ooh. have it copied by now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think he'd try to get, uh, was it, is it magic missile that we have? I think he had access to that, yeah. Yeah, from the book that, uh, from the dead rogue. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll both go in, because... Just... Alright. By the way, Lex, yeah. um, that mask is gonna have sleep. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. That's it. You can cast sleep using the mask once per day. It's a dope mask, just saying. It's pretty cool. Uh, so you enter into the tower. Ba -ba 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 -da -da -da. Oh, uh, as you cross the threshold, you feel a slight vibration, like a low frequency sound softly humming. Just something that happens. Is it like the other whistle that we didn't hear, or <laughs> it's not like that at all. That was high pitched. This is low pitched. Um... The whistle you didn't hear. <laughs> Why I gotta? Uh, oh, I'm gonna have. Um... You know what? I don't know how many of uh, Michaela's characters I want to go in with you. I'm leaning towards none, just because she's not here, and I don't want to accidentally kill any of her characters. <laughs> I mean, if we're taking our retainers, that should be fine. Yeah. So, you guys enter in, and you've got uh, a large room, very, again, worn by time and the elements. And in the center of the room is a stone pillar floor to ceiling connected uh and in the center of it is a stylized eye carved into it with a topaz pupil um what do you do any markings on the wall or anything there were at one point but at this point you can't read any of them they're all too worn away oh uh, from sandstorms and what yeah. have you okay there are several hey. holes missing from the walls where a lot of the elements have gotten in. Kingsmill, what do you make of this eye? Looks like an expensive gem. She's just like, I was going to wait outside where it's safe. Okay, uh, let's see here. <laughs> she comes in, she walks towards it. And as she walks within, I don't know, 10 feet of it. Uh, oh, we got a dog. Uh, you just hear, uh, in your minds not anywhere else but you hear in your minds uh in this echoey voice reveal the name of the infinite plane and kingsville stops really dead and she just looks at 
hey, you guys. And she's like, uh, <laughs> I didn't touch wow. anything. <laughs> Reveal the name of the infinite plane. I think really hard, Bill. Does that do anything? You think Bill? Yeah, I don't know. It's a name. Sure. <laughs> but then nothing happens. Why okay. do people know about the planes? I feel like Jeremy doesn't know much. Do you know anything, Randall? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've never exactly been here before. Kingsville is just like, I'm going to step back a little bit. And she sort of walks, she sort of shuffles to the side and back. And as she's backing up, she just freezes in place. What? Kingsville? Like not breathing, not Yeah, doing not anything. making, like, totally frozen, making no movement whatsoever. Uh, Kingsville? Uh oh. Anyone... Kingsville, I say. Are you alright? <laughs> She's not responding. <laughs> blink once for yes. Kingsville! Nothing is happening. I don't um... blink for no. <laughs> I think we should but keep trying. Kingsville. I, I can wait for a longer time for you to blink, though. Let's wait. This doesn't look good. <laughs> I think we're in trouble, guys. Oh no. I, knew uh, it was I don't want to get close. Um, can I take a rope and like lasso King's Mill and pull her towards us? You could try to do that, sure. Okay. Roll, I'll try to do that. Roll to hit. It is an AC9. <laughs> that is a 19. Hey. So you tie that lasso up like a real cowboy. And, yeah, and whip it around and throw it at King's Mill, and it gets oh to right where King's Mill is. It's about to fall over her, and then it just stops in midair. Ooh. Okay, we've got a frozen in time problem. Uh oh. You hear once again in your minds. Reveal the name of the infinite plane. Reveal it. I mm, puzzles. Mm. Would I maybe weakness. know what what this? <laughs> what do I know about the planes, Lex? Oh, uh, you know what? Help me not metagame. Help. Well, listen, I've already given you the answer to this question earlier in the campaign. So if you don't remember what it is, oh. I can't tell you. <laughs> oh man. Let me consult my notes. Yeah, let's think about this. If you roll. A really good intelligence check, I'll give you a hint. But you do already have the answer. Let's think about the places we've been. His stack? We went in that other tower. Wait, there was another tower? <laughs> Cramble's like, it, you guys, you're holding out on me. There was another tower? <laughs> uh, was that Ember, tower? Embercar? It wouldn't be Embercar, would it? That's a lost city that we're looking for. Yeah. Randall, maybe it was maybe it was written somewhere in magic that you read. Uh I don't know. I got stuff about the bright desert. Um hmm. Oh, you guys uh uh, Jarmy, as you're, as you're watching. Was it, was it Uta? Uta is uh, another ruined city that you guys didn't end up going to. All right. Um, Jarmy, as you continue watching, being like, I don't know the answer to this question. I'm just going to watch Kingsmel. I'm uh, like flicking the rope and seeing if I can like pull it back or yeah, anything. It it's pretty like, stuck though, isn't it? Yeah, it's it? pretty stuck. You s Or actually, you probably could pull it back if you wanted. But if you watch it, you can see it's still slowly dropping. Oh, okay. But it's just going very slowly. And right. and now that you look at it, you see King's Mill is still in the process of backing up. Like one of her feet is like slowly going to hit the ground for her next step back, but it's just like super, super slow. Somebody, somebody's screening the Matrix over here with all this bullet time. <laughs> but you were saying I noticed something else as I'm not thinking about this quiz. No, that that's what you noticed. That it oh, is that's what I noticed. Okay. So, do you want to pull on the rope though? 
Uh, I do not. I want to see if the rope can get far enough down. I'm going to wait for it and then okay. try to pull her out of that thing. Sure. If I'm noticing that the rope is falling at a very slow rate, hmm. but it's still falling. Well, I'm stumped, says uh, Onion, as you... he takes a seat next to Jarmy. Would you like to, you can roll an intelligence check for a hint. Uh, the only thing I also know about are the, the, the Elnar Nomads. I don't know too much. I got a 13. Is that below your intelligence? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, Randall, if you'd like to roll one as well, you can. Uh, Cramble's sure. intelligence is... 15, so yeah, it is. Hey, you got one hint. Hey, I rolled a 9 under 16. Okay, you get two hints. Uh, so, this has to do with the other tower you were in. You were right in that assumption. And hint number two is that uh, Shemea, the mage who had that tower, uh, had, uh, had built the tower in a special place that was not the material plane. Where did she say she built it? Was it the Astral Sea? You got it. <laughs> Cramble whispers. <laughs> Cramble's like, the Astral Sea. <laughs> the Astral Sea. Uh, and you hear in your <laughs> mind, uh, correct, you may enter the tower. Aha! Cramble dolt, barts, bolts forward. Bolts and darts. Is King's Mill still frozen? Oh, yeah. Uh, Cramble, yeah. roll 1d6. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Three. Um, you just go forward. You go towards we'll... the pillar. I guess we'll follow. Your Randall and your mole just following. Sure. Yep, same with Onion. Kingsville's still stuck there. We, went, like... Kingsville, we can't just leave her, guys. It's our good buddy Kingsville. Well, she said like, she wanted to stay outside, didn't she? I mean, yeah, but what, I feel like I got her in this situation. I feel real uh, bad. Uh, uh, we knew her before we knew you, Jeremy. <laughs> Maybe by the time we get out, she'll finally finish her steps, and so it'll be like she missed nothing. Yeah, it looks I'm gonna like I'm gonna pull my rope real back. slow. Okay, you can pull your rope back. There's some resistance, but you're able to get it. Okay. Um. Okay, so you walk forward to where the pillar is. Uh, if you look around it, it's a fairly wide pillar, and on the other side of it, you can see, uh, against the far wall is a stairwell, that goes up to the second floor. Um. And I assume you guys are just going to head towards it? Yep. Okay. You head towards it. Uh, I need each person to roll me 1d6. Including all the retainers? Whoever's in that room walking towards it, yeah. Uh, I'm following as well, I suppose, because although Jeremy doesn't want to leave, I don't want to leave the rest of the party. So I'll roll a d6 as well, is that true? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Randall rolls a two, Emo rounds a six. Oh my god, Cramble rolled a two. I mean, Cramble rolled a six, and Anand rolled a two. Oh my god, <laughs> Jarmy rolled a three. Wow. Uh, you cross to the other side of the room. Uh, you get to the staircase. All right. Kingsville, if you can hear me, think Astral Sea. Astral plane. <laughs> Not because that's this isn't fourth edition D and D. This is. <laughs> remember, remember <laughs> to get your phrasing right for the edition of D and D you're playing. Exactly. Or you'll <laughs> just let you know. <laughs> Don't want to cause a time rift. Yep. Uh, you head up the stairs. Head up the stairs. Uh, up the stairs. Is... Okay. Oh, let's see here. Emo is kind of charging ahead looking for a fight. Cool. We also didn't see any stairs going down, correct? You did not, no. Okay. 
Um, this entire room looks like um, really bare, actually. There really wasn't. It's a big room, but there doesn't seem to be much in it. Uh, so, let's see here. You go up the stairs. You come into a another chamber, smaller than the one below. Uh, a giant hourglass, or I'm sorry, a giant crystal hourglass dominates the far side of this room and is mounted on the wall at the center of a great wheel. Uh, let's see. In the center of the room is a large crank. Uh, if you have seen the film Conan the Barbarian, uh, the Wheel of Pain is what uh, looks like that. Although it's not, uh, this crank is probably not as painful as that. But it's basically just a big circular crank with all these spokes on it. Uh, and if you get up, grab it, and sort of walk in a circle, it, it'll turn it. <coughs> Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Also, somebody roll me 1d6. I rolled a 6. Hey! Uh, you see, off to the side of the room, there is a section of... Or, I'm sorry, off to one side of the room, there's a staircase. To the On the other side of the room, there is a section of wall that you look at it, and it looks like a section of wall. And then you look at the hourglass, and then you look back at it, and the section of wall just isn't there. And then you look back away from it, and then you look back at it, and the section of wall is there again. And if you keep your eyes on it, it seems like it flickers every once in a while. Guys, check out that wall. Yeah, it's a wall. No, what keep looking. It? Keep looking at it, Randall. Keep looking. What are you trying to say? Just watch it. Just wait. Just wait for it. It flickers on. <laughs> the, the wall disappears oh and then reappears. God. Ah, see, look, look, look. See? See what I have? See, see? It's a should, disappearing should, wall. Should we go through the wall? I don't think we can go through the wall, but I think we can go through that space when the wall is gone. Is there a <laughs> sand dripping through the hourglass? No. Okay. I'll walk over to that wall and try to touch it. That's flickering. Your hand goes right through it. Yep. And I fall forward. Ah! <laughs> fall forward. Boom. Oh. <clears throat> And that's totally I... wrong. You can't go through that wall. Uh, oh, I will point out the hourglass, which is, I mean, it's big. It's like yeah. six feet tall. Uh, there is a bunch of purple sand in it. It's just all collected at the bottom. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, you follow. What do I see on uh, the other side of this? Well, uh, you look around, and you see uh, what looks like might have been a storage room at some point, but appears to be empty. Okay. I'm gonna like feel the walls to see if there's any more hidden walls within this hidden room. Nope. Okay. Uh, you spend a you or I should say, do you want to spend a turn doing that? Because that's how long sure. it takes to search. Yep. Okay, ten minutes. And then when I'm done, I want to like lay back down where the 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 wall is like at my torso, and I'll be like, hey guys, check it out! I'm like trapped. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, we had a good joke about that. And then I, you know. How, how big is this hourglass? It's, it's big. It's like six feet tall. And it is mounted to the wall on a giant wheel. Okay. Yeah, I guess Emol will be like, ugh, this is boring. Let's see what this does. You gotta start turning the wheel to as turn, he, turn the hourglass. As he starts turning the wheel, uh, you see the hourglass on the wall and starts turning. Do you continue turning the wheel? Yes, Emol does, because okay. he's an idiot. Sure. He continues turning the wheel. The hour class goes, it completely rotates, and you hear it click into place, and the sand begins to fall, and then the whole room shimmers and changes. Uh, suddenly, the walls don't look ruined or old anymore. They look brand new. There are no chunks missing from the exterior. Uh, instead, there are some nice windows, and there are two people standing next to you having an argument. <laughs> One is wearing a hawk mask, and the other seems to be wearing robes. And you hear one of them say, The master is too guarded with his secrets. Uh, I came here to study, and he has given me nothing. And the, the person in the hawk mask is like, You will get what he gives you. The master only gives what uh or only gives as much as those 
uh, as those who come to study put in. I should have written this out. <laughs> um, and then they look and they see you there and they're like, what? And that's where we're going to stop for this week. <laughs> like, uh oh. Ooh, it's almost like it's a time travel reference. The whole, the Tower of the Sands is a time travel reference. Hey. Marty. No. <laughs> We've got to go back to the future. Don't we not know sleep with happen? your mom, Marty. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, okay, so, uh, like I said, we're going to end a little early today, so we're ending now. Thank you guys for watching, and thanks to my players for playing. Oh, I lost my headphones. I can't hear anything. Oh, we can't hear us. Ah. Uh, <laughs> This happens every week. I really need to get a long record for these <laughs> So this has been Seekers of the Scorpion Crown on the Greyhawk channel. We are live Saturdays, 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, every week. And uh, sometimes we start on time. And yeah. Uh, usually our players are Davis, Wild Engineer, Jordan, and Michaela. Uh, Michaela was out this week. She was doing a cool thing at a cool festival. And next week, we're actually gonna, going to be joined by a guest. If uh, the stars align properly, we will be joined by Celeste Conowich of the Venture Maidens, who will be playing in this game. So that's going to be fun. fun. Yeah. Uh, we've been playing BX D D. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, another quick shout out to the uh, Patreon supporters and twitch subs who help make this channel happen we really appreciate it uh there is a monster of the week stream coming up at 8 p.m so in about an hour and a half uh on this channel it's uh it's really cool bianca zelda runs it it's a good time and what else do i want to say oh uh outros i am lex and you can find me uh on twitter at dank dungeons Oh, I need to change my little thing. It used to be Dank Dungeons TV, but I fixed my username. I finally was able Yay. to do it. Whoever had Dank Dungeons when I started that account two years ago finally left Twitter, so now I get to use a Dank Dungeons without a TV on the end. Uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> so you can find me on Twitter at Dank Dungeons. I do all sorts of things. I have a show that I have three seasons of on YouTube. It's an actual play show. Uh, I obviously do this. I have been on a bunch of streams in the past, and I write stuff for the DMs Guild. Uh, also, actually, no, I'll save that for after. Hey, why don't you guys tell me who you are and where we can find you, starting with Jordan. Uh, I'm Jordan. You can find me with Jordan with a silent PH in the middle on all of the social medias. Um, I'm there for, well, I think all of them, most of them. But if you search that, you can find me. Uh, and I make uh, D&D lore videos on YouTube, as well as a weekly podcast called the Saturday Morning D&D Show, where I talk about the games that I'm running and how to be a better dungeon master. And that's me. Nice. Oh, Davis. Hello, I'm Davis. You can find me at Dank Dungeons on Twitter. No TV. What about on YouTube, Lex? YouTube.com slash Dank Dungeons. Dank Dungeons. I think on it might YouTube be YouTube.com well. slash channel slash. No, I think it's just slash Dank Dungeons. I'm pretty sure I that's how that URL works. Is it? Yeah. It's one of the two. Listen, search Dank Dungeons on YouTube. You'll find it. Search, yeah, search Dank Dungeons on YouTube and watch, uh, watch our, uh, watch our show, our old show there. Mm -hmm. And then watch us on this show, and also on Twitter, Dank Dungeons. Yep, 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 and Facebook. I'm Davis. <laughs> Thanks, Wild Engineer. You're welcome. <laughs> yes, hi, I'm Wild Engineer. Um, gosh, it's summer now, so I guess you can find me here on Saturdays. And doing some other Twitch stuff. So yeah, and Wild Engineer on Twitter. Pretty cool. Nice. Uh, hey, guess what, viewers, listeners, view viewers? Uh, hey, do you want a poster, an official Secrets of the Scorpion Crown poster or t-shirt? Well, I don't know if you've ever wondered that, but now you can have one by going over to the Teespring that I started. <laughs> Uh, and I have a design for the poster, which kind of looks like, um, if you look at the border of this, it kind of looks like an old beat up book cover. Uh, and the t-shirt has this really cool art on it as well, and some stylized text. Uh, link is in chat, but it is teespring.com slash stores slash Lex's dash teespring. Uh, and you can find a link to that on my Twitter if you want to check it out. So, yeah. Check if you're really interested in the show and you want to buy some branded content, have a nice t-shirt. I think they came out pretty good, but you know, you'd be the judge of that. Check them. Check them the heck out. Uh, and until next week, 
will will be seeing ya.